Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to another video and yep, it is both of us again to serve you some nice keyboard content. Mm -hmm. But we are not going to do customs today, but rather something familiar. Something that served as the beginning of my keyboard journey. So for old time viewers may have remember last year's Keycon K3 V2 review done by Koki here. And that board is pretty straightforward. For somebody that needs an external keyboard that closely resembles and type like a laptop keyboard, and that the K3 is quite a unique case as it uses like low profile switches and the layout is not exploded 75% to create a compact unit that hosts some of the most used keys for productivity. Well, the number of knobs mods it can take is quite minimum as you can only do like leaving the steps or applying a couple layer of tape mods. And the keyboard's ABS key cap easily attracts oil shine and I kid you not, one month of daily usage plus like your occasional oily fingers from eating chips really makes them quite bad in my opinion. Well, there is also the uh, full aluminum counterpart in the form of the Keychron S1 but that's another topic for another day or you can go and look it up on your own for now. Well, enough with the history lesson and let's talk about today's guest, the mm -hmm. Keychron K1 Pro. Yes, so this is a TKL mechanical keyboard and also using low profile switches and keycaps. Yep. Yeah, so you will get a very similar feel with the other keyboard that we reviewed last year. It's just that in a different layout, which I think would suit me better because I'm a TKL user. And low profile, I'm actually quite okay with low profiles. So inside the box, we have a quick start guide alongside with all of this stuff. Supports VIA. Yep, this is what actually what the Pro means. You got the QMA VIA support and there's a little bit of like another little nitty gritty things that serve as an upgrade. But we'll talk about those as we unbox the thing. Mm -hmm. So Keychron shows you all this. This is the standard full size switch yeah, but it's but using low profile. Yep, universal lock. Yeah, then Your user manual. User manual. Try mode, is it? No Domo, you don't have the USB dongle, so oh, okay. yeah, your usual Keychron Domo. Yeah, they okay. don't like 2.4 apparently. I don't know why, 2.4 is so much better. So here you got some extra keycaps as well, you got your alternative keycaps for your enter, windows key, out key, Yeah, all of those the stuff. layout comes with macOS by default. Yeah, so macOS you got the control, command and option keys, which is shown here. Okay, so you also got your keycap puller, switch puller and your USB cable. This is nicely braided, so I like this, but I'm not going to use this because we have lots of USB-C cables anyway. First impression, this overall color scheme is very similar to their other keyboards as well. Yeah. But I'm not sure what kind of profile this is. It's a lot flatter. Uh, this one is actually what they call like uh, version 0 of what it is currently known as the LSA profile. LSA, LSA. Pro yeah. yeah, low profile spherical angle. Yeah, but the sphericalness is from Yes, this one is technically version 0 because the current LSA one, they say like they receive feedbacks from the community and that one is actually improved upon this. Okay. Okay, I can see the resemblance of a spherical design. It's just yeah. very flat. And as you can see, like if you try like some of the older Keychron stuff, their accent colors is actually orange, but they changed to red. So for the top three part, they actually by default they wired to a print screen. This one is I think like microphone, a, a, microphone not microphone, Alexa, right? Siri, not Alexa. <laughs> Siri. Yeah, for Mac is Siri. Ah, uh, yeah, la, yeah, la, yeah, sure. And this one is like <laughs> RGB control. So they replaced it. I think like two of the three important keys because we use like print screen a lot, and they decided mm. to remain that. Okay, so even for such a thin keyboard, you still got your sliders for changing between modes. Surprisingly, they got an Android mode in between. Now, actually, Windows and Android is sharing the same. Mac mm. OS and iPad OS is using the other layout, so you can just slide to change. Here, you got dual mode, Bluetooth, and off or cable. cable. Yeah. Technically, you can just unplug the cable in cable mode, and then it's off, but yeah. they have a dedicated off mode. Not sure why. Yeah, so I don't know. So you don't go and short the PCB for whatever reason. <laughs> Hmm, that's what mm, you did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but anyway, so the keycaps for this time, they changed from ABS to double sharp PBT keycaps. And the colors are pretty nice. Yeah, so double sharp PBT, you can see the white color material inside. Real good here. So since this is a dual mode 
keyboard, you also have the indicator LEDs right here. So caps lock and Bluetooth, yep. which is good. They never occupy here. Usually here will be like blindingly yeah. bright. And then they also have triple Bluetooth connections that you can yeah, do. Yeah, up to three devices. And also the polling rate is at 1000 Hz. So yeah, oh. wireless gamers, go ahead, do your thing. Wouldn't tell you to go ahead. <laughs> Usually there will be latency, but it depends on how much you yeah. can tolerate. So to change it, you can press FN123 and then you can change between first, second and third connected devices, Yep, which is handy. So how you connect it with your Bluetooth is very simple. Hold FN key, hold this button. Yeah. Then One, two, or three. start blinking. Yes, you have to hold it for three seconds. It will like blink slowly. Mm. That's when you're going to pair it. Open your Bluetooth menu, add device. First one, Bluetooth for keyboards. And you're going to say, Keychron K1 Pro. Why are they quotation marks? Keychron yeah. K1 Pro. Okay, done. There we go, connected. And now I will also show you how to connect it with my phone. So if you see, you got triple profiles. We hit FN2, two. we switch it, so you can see the blinking yeah, like that. Switch first, then pair it. Pair it. Okay, so... We start blinking yep, again. We start blinking. And then here... Can we find it? Yep. K1 Pro. Oh, I should show it here. Yep, pair so, it. So K1 Pro. So... It is done pairing, so now I can hit all the keys. Here. Let's uh, try. Yeah, I'm not gonna do much. I'm just gonna show you that it actually yeah. works. Then you can open Arrow the Play Store. Going to play. And then use your keyboard to navigate and stuff. Yeah, so maybe like type some shit. Yeah, yep. it works. And then if you want to switch back to your laptop, which is paired with the first one, FN1, then you can see it blinking. Did it blink? Yep. Yeah, it blinks. Like a triple blink, then yeah, you, then you just... switch to a keyboard. Yep, keyboard, yep, it's going back. Mm -hmm. That's simple. And then the switch, this is something special that I want to talk about. What yeah. switch is this? This one is low profile Gateron, and this one is brown switch, which in comparison to the K3 last time, that one is actually optical switch, that one is optical blue, so Ooh. you do have a little bit of sound difference and also like the latency. Yes, yes, yes. But for this one, I can tell you for sure, first impression, very poppy yes. and fun to type on. Yes, it actually sounds pretty decent for a low profile switch. That alone is like, yeah, out of the box. So. Octopus Hands, 157 WPM. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So the entire sound profile, well, for a standard low profile keyboard, pretty decent. Yeah, pretty decent. Actually, I like the whole tactility of it. The combination yeah. of the brown switch with this is actually very good. Yeah, I'm really surprised. And they're also using floating keycap design. I mean, they can't really do much with a thin, this kind of thin keyboards anyway. Yeah. So at the back here, we also have Angle feet. Yep. Uh, Two stage. I mean, I don't remember the K3 having this. Yep, it, it does, it does. It does? Yep. Okay. It does. So maybe it's to simulate your laptop being tinted a bit, I yeah. guess. <laughs> <laughs> Very weird decision, but it's up to you how you want to use it. Okay, now do the VIA. Yeah, for the VIA. Is there any profile available for this keyboard already? No, I think it. so, but we can try. Yep, there's no compatible. No, you need wire for VIA. Oh, oops. VIA has the profile. I'm not sure. Let's connect. Nope, it doesn't. You have to go to the website and get the JSON file, hop through the design tab, you know, like the LMK81, so... Yeah, so they did mention that it is still waiting for approval, but if you want it, then you can get the JSON file. Sir, the one is white bag lead Oh, sorry. So, same thing, show design type first. Then you go there. But I think this one, it doesn't need V2, but let's try like not, not using V2 first. I don't remember using V2 for the... LMK, it... Q3. You, oh, but I mean like last time when we do the LMK, it, it does need two. Yeah, so it just pop up. You don't need to use V2. Yeah, so you can just adjust anything. 
screenshot, you got Siri. Yeah, for this one is for 0 and 1 is for the Mac OS and 2, 3 is the uh, Windows layout. So as you can see from the layer 2, I did adjust for the, the Siri button to use M0 for now. Macro mode, macro, macro mode. zero. Yeah, macro zero and my macro zero is actually, oh, what is it again? Ah yes, the snipping tool. Oh, yes. I think you already got a screenshot. Sometimes I just need that specific because you just want to cut some parts for you to throw into chat or whatever. First world problem for Yes, this first world problem. Okay, for my setup is a bit more complicated. I'll just show you a screenshot of what I did on the Q3 instead. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, to summarize everything, the Keychron K1 Pro really solved a lot of the pain points I encountered back in the K3 V2. So not only it's like the Bluetooth connection is now better now because it's using Bluetooth 5.1, it continues to support like the iconic tri device connection. So you can switch around your rig like a discount or budget KVM so to say. Yeah, budget KVM, that's, that's the correct way to put it, I think. Yeah, put it in a simple way, <laughs> budget mm, KVM. Yeah. Budget KVM. Mm. And so with a great keycap set and the hopsum option to, for you to play around, it maintains a fair bit of customization and maintenance in case your switch is broken by whatever like external forces or something. And yeah, your remapping capability through QMK and VAA is the main key selling point here as and because that's what the Pro is going to be. So for uh, for editors like us, I think like rebinding keys or typing a long ass phrase with just one key is just something we can't skip over right now. Mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, for a quick little trivia, the QMK and VAA is also one of the reasons why I U-turn from using a 65 or 75% back to a TKL because those extra keys is just so good when you bind them with macros. Yep. So at the price of 489 ringgits, I think that is reason reasonable to swallow. But let's do a quick comparison. So the k 3 v 2 I remember last time I bought it is at about 330 ringgit. So this one is like 489. So let's do it for 490. So for an extra 160 ringgit, you get way better keycaps. Uh, mechanical switches instead of the optical ones, QMK, VIA support, better wireless connection, and overall improved build quality in terms of the materials they use because the bottom part, the plastic, is somehow more sturdier right now. One quick question, what's the battery capacity of this? Uh, I do not know. So you just like put like if you check it or okay. whatever. Like. So for a product tailored towards productivity, I think that people shouldn't have much trouble to afford it for the first place. La. Like I say, this one, maybe they are designed for like the office users. So we are working adults. So this is probably something to invest into. Mm -hmm. And second, and the support for Mac OS and Windows with accompanied keycaps. If you're one of those who just want to get away from the Apple Magic Keyboard, because I know that that thing is <sighs> expensive and not really... Yes, yes. Actually, that yeah. would be a, this would be a fantastic replacement for the yeah. keyboard. This is by far one of the best choices to replace it. Or if you really want to keep the layout going, maybe you can find the K3 Pro, but it's currently at the time of filming, it's not available in Malaysia yet. So keep an eye on that. So yeah, that's all for today's video. And if you want to grab yourself one of these, you can do so through the links below. And for the next one, it will be something cool. So stay tuned. So yeah, peace.